Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Bricks and today I want to show you uh, something that I am working on currently and how I actually intend on trying to set my new city display up which is what's taking me a little long and what that is is called the Mills plate system so if this is something that interests you stick around because it's coming up. And here it is without further ado, uh, what I am intending on doing for my airport runways, taxiways and airfield. Uh, as you can see here, that's why I had the jet plane on it. The reason that I'm looking at doing this particular system, like I said, this is a Mills plate system. Uh, and I got the idea from uh, Michael Gale and I, the pictures that I found were on Flickr. And I will put a... Uh, link in the description of this video below if you would like to see those pictures yourself as I am working off his original works but I am changing things up to fit my needs as I see fit. Anyway, uh, to quickly kind of discuss the mill system to kind of show you what it is, this would be the normal, you'd use your 32 by 32 base plate and then you would put your bricks on four inches or four studs on center, so to speak. As you can see, there's always four studs in between these. And then what you would do, or you could even do it two studs in between. It depends on what combination of bricks you want to use. Uh, what I would in intend on doing if I was going to cover this up for, say, uh, landscaping or something, I would try and use six by six plates. But you have to space your base studs depending on what type of base plate you're going to put on top of that. But here's the big advantage of this. Number one, once you're done, as you can see with mine, it's hollow, which gives you the ability to run wires through it. Number two, though, just to quickly show you this again, you have on every corner, you have your one by four technique pins. And what it is, is if you wanted to be able to pull a little section out and work on it and pop it back together, it's just like the modular buildings that Lego makes. You can actually pull this apart and slap it together any way that you see fit, which makes it very versatile and easy to use in a city. But another cool thing is, is every corner, because you're putting this four or two by two uh, square brick here, you don't have to necessarily use a brick and you can color code it. So say if I wanted to, I could put an orange and a blue here. And then I know, say I, I had this big display and I was taking it to a uh, display place to put it on, a, you know, to take it to a show. Um, I would have all my colored corners. So I know this plate goes to the next orange and blue. This plate goes to the next yellow and yellow. This plate goes to the next green and green. And if you have a whole bunch of these Mills plates set up, like for what I'm going to have on my city, for example, you can even start using one or a two by two square plates. And then you could actually have say green, yellow, orange, or, you know, and put multiple colors on each corner. That way it gives you the ability, like I said, to pull it apart and know exactly what piece it's supposed to snap back to again. But again, this is how the actual system usually works and this is kind of my take on it and what I mean by this is my take on it my intention is I want to make my entire airfield illuminated and with doing that I want to make sure everything's as accurate as possible to an actual airport with that being said uh, as you can see here for example these edge lights are yellow and then I have red and white I'm sorry, white and red, red, white and red, going down the center line of the runway. <clears throat> now, mind you, this is still a work in progress, but uh, what I want to point out, though, is if this was an actual runway, the last 3,000 feet of a runway is when you start getting the color variances, which is indicators to the pilot to let them know how much distance is left before they run out of runway. So that way they know they have to stop before that amount. Now, what it is is the last 3,000 feet at 3,000 feet, they start going white, red, white, red, white, red. Okay, now that's in the first 1,000 feet of the last 3,000 feet. At 2,000 feet, you start getting all these yellow edge lights on top of the white and red center lines. And then the last 
thousand feet of the runway, you'll have solid red centerline lights. And that lets the pilot know, hey, you're at your absolute minimum. You either have to take off or you got to get this plane to stop. One way or the other, we need to stop because you're out of runway. Um, and that is how I want to do my airfield because I want to make sure it's as realistic looking as possible. And just like I plan on redoing some of my uh, <clears throat> distance remainder signs and things of that nature. And I still want to put my pappies and my vassies on and I want to have those illuminated. And I want to have my taxiway edge lights illuminated. And this to me seems like it would be the easiest solution to come by that. And how I am doing it, everybody knows that I love these 8x16 plates. And what I have here is, this is the little, uh, I believe they call it a 1x2 bracket. <clears throat> I would have to put the part numbers up on screen for you. But again, this is not a how-to video. I'm just kind of showing you what I have going on. Um, but the reason I'm doing it this way is I can use up all my 8x16 tiles. It makes it really quick and easy to fill in. I'm still using the, my, the mills system on the edges and then I just lay my runway down in the center. And then I have these tiles here, which is what this, this, and this rest on to hold it in place. But the best part about it is, as you can see here, at least I hope you can see it there, there is in each one of these is a headlight brick. And what that is there for is because when I go to illuminate this up, each one of these will be lit up and it's because it's already hollow in the back. Now I still have a nice smooth surface to work with and it, it will be really easy to hide all my wires and hide my power cables and all that good stuff. And then even for these lights, because the, the LEDs that I intend on using have that angel fine hair. And to give you an example of what I'm talking about, this is the LEDs I'm looking at using. And yes, they are <laughs> microscopic. And the uh, wire that's already attached to them, like I said, it is angel fine hair, is what I call it anyway, because this feels like hair when you're stroking it. And what is really cool about this is this wire is so thin that if I want to, I can take that and just lay it in there and you're not even going to notice it. And then I can take and stick my edge lights right on top of those like so and pop them down and they go together perfectly and you'll never even know it's there. And with the magic of YouTube, I can show you real quickly. There you go with it lit up. And like I said, all the wiring is nice and hidden. Now how I lit that up is I have a little box. All these lights work off three volts and that's what this is, is a little box with three volt output on it. And it just has a simple on off switch there. Uh, but that is my intention of working on my runways. So there's gonna be a, probably a lot of delay as far as getting the city up. What I'm looking at possibly doing is putting the city up <clears throat> and maybe adding because I want to do the whole city with this Mills Plate system just for the simple fact of being able to illuminate everything. Uh, and I really, really, really like how this is turning out so far. But mind you, the rest of the city would be built on the basic system, which is the 32 by 32 base plates. But because my runway in the airplanes requires such a huge amount of space and I need to be able to fit that plane on that runway, that is why I'm going to be doing my own mill system on the 48 by 48 base plates. So I'm gonna have a combination of systems that I plan on intending to use in my city display. So that is some of what I'm up to, and I will make some actual how-to videos and some full-length videos once I am totally set on what I'm going to be doing with all this. Again, this is still just a, a first attempt trial at it, um, and I, I do want to do a, a freeway still, and I'm going to be using a freeway to do, probably going to be laying it out kind of like this as well when I do that freeway system. And I... I I don't want to do a how-to video until I actually have all my ducks in a row and I'm set on how I'm going to do it and that's and that's where I'm done. Because uh, I don't like making a how-to video only to say, hey, look, you know what? I came up with a better idea and I'm going to change it. So, <laughs> again, this this is just a rough draft.
Anyway, I just again wanted to make a really quick video to kind of show you guys what I'm working with and what I'm doing and why it's been kind of slow as to try and getting a city update posted for everybody. Uh, what I'm actually looking at doing is probably making some type of city update soon uh, and just using the original street plates because this is going to be a very long project as you can see as it takes a lot of parts to institute. But anyway, as always, if you get a chance, check out my links in the description and in the comment section of this video below as any and all sales from those links do help my channel and i thank you for coming to bevan's bricks don't forget to like subscribe and share below and we'll see you next time on bevan's bricks